personal note as stanch as my stock and trade. If the job's too tough for you to handle, you got a job for me, George Valentine. Write full details. Standard of California, on behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations throughout the West, invites you to Let George Do It. Partner in Panama, another adventure of George Valentine. Dear Mr. Valentine, the job's not too tough for me, but I don't want hey, it. Hey, wait a minute. Who is this, Lieutenant Riley? It's the voice of desperation. Get over here quick. Why? Why? Why, he asks. Valentine, there's a character wrapped around my neck. His name is Grovich. The stupendous Mr. Grovich. Hollywood's most colossal producer of popcorn bait. He makes movies? Oh, no, no. Not without you, he doesn't. That's the job, Valentine. You're going to be the man behind the man behind an Oscar. That's an eight ball in arms. Please, please, Miss Brooks. I do not do cherry traces. My style is realism. My own invention, realism. Oh, I see, Mr. Grovich. In my last picture, a man chases a man across Golden Gate Bridge. You know where we took that picture? Golden Gate Bridge. Precisely. You have the feel of it. Real people, real places, real blood in the heart of the heroin, real bullets. Yeah, sure, Mr. Grovich. And it's real money, too, I suppose. But what is Ah, oh, he's made a picture, but he can't release it, Valentine. Why not? Nobody will buy it? The world is clamoring for it. So is the Academy. And so is my bank. I have got a million dollars tied up. Well, what's the matter? What happened? Vic Ruskin. That's what's happened. Vic Ruskin? Huh? Yes, yes, a name from ancient history. One of the prehistoric thorns in my side. Lieutenant, I've heard of Ruskin, but I thought he was dead. So did I. Yeah, so did the police in half a dozen cities all over the world. Only to be honest about it, he just disappeared ten years ago. He might have stayed that way if it hadn't been for my friend Grovich here. But no, now he's got to go around raising the dead. Mr. Valentine, this latest picture of mine that I can't release, it's a masterpiece. Why? It is real. What's real about it? People. Real people like bank robbers, murderers, you know. Like Vic Ruskin. He's in it. His name. Things he did. Oh, oh, now I get it, Mr. Grovich. You've done one of your super thrillers based on some of Vic Ruskin's crimes. And uh, you haven't bothered to get his permission first. But I thought he was dead Then he had no relatives. What makes you think he isn't dead? He sent us a letter. He read about the picture in a fan magazine. He wants $50,000. For the right to use the once of his life. Fifty thousand cash. And the lawyers tell me. Did he sign the letter? Yes, yeah, sure. But there isn't a record of his signature we could check. But there's a record of other things. In the letter, he gives facts about his crimes only he and the police could have known. No, nah, there's no doubt about it. It's him, all right. Okay, okay. So Vic Ruskin's alive instead of dead. And he's got the amazing gall to want fifty thousand dollars for giving you... to give him the money. What? And if he sticks his neck out far enough to take the cash, maybe the police can close in and get him extradited before he pulls into hiding again. Uh, say that again, will you? Extradited? Well, whoever delivers the money will have to go to Panama, naturally. That's where the letter came from. Panama? Oh, now, wait a minute. But, Mr. Valentine, think of my picture. It's in the can, but on the hook. Look, it's a big favor to us, Valentine. Now, if you'll but only Stop go... it, both of you. George, it's suicide. Vic Ruskin will know that whoever's bringing the money will want to catch him, Miss too. Miss Brooks, all Valentine does is deliver the money, get Ruskin's signature on the release, then duck out and we do all the rest. Yeah, and I suppose I find this guy wearing a sign around his neck saying... Well, oh. it's here in the letter. You, uh, you meet a guide who'll take you to him, uh, Del Catoni. Now, you meet Del Catoni at Balboa when you land at Tocumen Airport. <laughs> there you see, nothing to it, Angel. Just an eight ball with wings. Caracas para Rio de Janeiro. 
Janeiro. Would you be looking for something? Arecaibo. I say, excuse Caracas. me, my friend. Would you be looking for something? Huh? Oh, no, no. I, I just got in. Oh, you didn't. What's that? My friend, I couldn't help noticing. You've been walking around the airport with your bag there like a man lost. As a native of the parts, I always like to help. Okay, Irish. I got in half an hour ago from Managua. I have been looking for somebody, but uh, not with your accent, I'm afraid. You're not Del Catoni. A uh, friend, my friend, a friend. He asked me to meet you. Poor Catoni is a musician. Plays in the sailor place in the old town, Club Cortez. And, Mr. Valentine, since your plane come in at night... He would have met me anyway. Of course, to guide you to someone. So if you'll just be coming with me... Not quite so fast, but... Such a crowd here, a man would... Well, he should know how easy it is in a crowd to... No, no, you don't. Let go of that bag. Hey! Oh! Oh. Senor! Senor, what is it? You're sick. What has happened? Senor, please. No, no, it's it's nothing. Forget it. But, senor, the man. I saw the man. Yeah, nothing happened, I said. Skipper, will you? A sucker just stole my three clean shirts, that's all. (laughs) Welcome to Panama. You're not drinking, monsieur? No. In the Club Cortez, everyone drinks. Yeah, sure. Well, I'm way behind. I'm an exception, that's all. But you are alone. Well, that's the way exceptions always are. Now, look, there's an English sailor across the bar wants somebody to talk to. <laughs> He's quite happy talking to himself. Um, I'm a singer, but in the Club Cortez, the boss says everyone should have a partner. What are you doing here? Waiting for the music to stop? <laughs> the orchestra. I like to visit with musicians. Oh. And why are you in Panama? Oh, now, look, sister, I don't see where. Oh, wait a minute. Come on, sit down. Thank you. You bump into people, don't you? Well, I had a friend down here once. Name was Ruskin, I believe. Of course. Vic Ruskin. What do you have to drink? Nothing. Where did you know him? When? A long time ago. Know where he is now? I wish that I did. I wish I could help you, monsieur. Oh, what do you mean? (laughs) Nothing. Just that Vic Ruskin is dead, isn't he? (sighs) Okay, lady, many thanks anyway. But, monsieur... I'll stick to musicians, thank you. Show me which one of these marimba boys is Catoni, will you? Del Catoni? Yeah, that's right. I'd like to meet him. Everybody should have a partner. (laughs) Then you're still alone, aren't you? I still have a chance. What's that? Don't you read Spanish? It was in all the newspapers. Huh? Come on, come on, let's have it. Del Catoni was found murdered in the street, monsieur, more than three days ago. Ah! We meet again, eh, Mr. Valentine? Well, make yourself at home in my room, my friend. <laughs> I had a little key, and it just happened to fit. Oh, well, don't apologize, Buster. After the runaround I've been through, I'm glad to have a man-sized shadow to work no. out on. Uh, no, no. Now, let go. I suppose you brought my suitcase back, Yes, huh? yes, I did. The shirts didn't fit, huh? You came to look for some more. Please, please, I only wanted to All see All right, you. Irish, here I am. Now, make it fast. Well, my regards to you. Now, in the first place, Mr. Valentine... Come on, faster. But you must understand uh, about the airport. I didn't intend... Now, you listen to me. You knew Catoni was dead, but he was supposed to meet me. You know I'm delivering money to Vic Ruskin. Maybe you even know where Ruskin is. Well, now take the words out of your mouth and let's have it. <laughs> Mr. Valentine, my name is Pizarro Fane. Oh, great combination. The South American Irish. I'll have you know in the artillery and the Simon Bilo- Bolivar, my grandfather was... Yeah, come on, come on, come on. All right, all right. But never mind, it's a good story sometime. By occupation, Mr. Valentine, I'm by way of being a barrister. Lawyer? Oh, this gets wilder and wilder, doesn't it? What do you chase for ambulances down here? Ambulances? Oh, I'm not in regular practice, as they say. Yeah, I can imagine. I have a preference for living down the coast, you know, banana plantations and hardwood jungles. You mean down where it's hotter, you find there's less heat? You're a smart man. I admit the stupidity of trying to steal that $50,000 from you, but, Mr. Valentine, do you know what a quid pro quo is? Sure. It's the first nickel in the slot machine. Remuneration, reward. It'd even be legal. You mean if you can't fry a fish one way, you'll do it another. Now, what's the idea? You want to sell me what you know? Is that it? I'll do even better. I'll sell an object. A statue. A what? (laughs) 
A statue, my friend. In a bamboo thicket by a path cross. And as for what all I know, well, I'm sure we can reach a price. Yeah. You know, prices are slipping these days. Mr. Valentine, my information would be accurate. I'm not an amateur informer. Don't be so eager, Pizarro. You make it sound even phonier. Please, don't bother to answer that. Yeah, hello. Hello, monsieur. Well, it's you, huh? Who better would you expect, monsieur? Pan American Airways with a free ticket home. I'm getting sick of the local population. But I'm only trying to help you, monsieur. Oh, sure, I know, I know. Now, look, I'm busy right now. I've got a professional liar here. Now, look, Valentine. But, monsieur, listen. I've been tracing the actions of the musician for you. Delcatoni, I found a ship captain, Captain Tug, who was with him a week ago down the coast. Down the coast? The captain knows nothing, but... He picked up Katoni a week ago from a visit to some banana plantation. Huh? Lady, maybe you've just begun to clean up a liar. What? What? But, monsieur, can't I help more? Can't I... Thanks. Uh, no, I, uh... I just decided to make a purchase someplace Mr. Else. Valentine! Hold it a second. Mr. Valentine! Outside there! Look out! Monsieur! Monsieur, where are you? I'm right here on the rug. Where do you think... But what was it? What happened? What... Do you really think you could help me find Vic Ruskin down the coast with this captain you dug up, find the plantation? I would hope so, monsieur. I would want to, whatever you want. Okay, sister. Seeing the dance floor has just been swept clean by bullets, I guess you finally got yourself a partner. The competition was just shot full of holes. Turn to tonight's adventure of George Valentine in just a moment. One of these days, you get in your car to start out to a dinner party, a business trip, or maybe a family gathering. You touch the starter, and, uh uh-oh, dead battery. But there's an easy way to avoid that kind of holdup and have your car start fast every time. The protective service you get at an independent Chevron gas station and a standard station will do it. They can tell in the jiffy if, Corrosion is threatening the battery cable. They'll make sure the watery level is right and the terminal posts and clamps are okay. Why not get this speedy protective service tomorrow? Avoid the delay and extra costs of a neglected battery. It's especially important at this time because short trips and cold weather put extra drain on the battery, cut down on its ability to do its job. And, of course, your battery loses power most when your car is used least. So for full starting power... And to keep your lights and radio working properly, ask for a battery check. It's another protective service offered you at standard stations and at independent Chevron gas stations where they say and mean we take better care of your car. Come down to Panama with fifty thousand dollars in cash. You're to deliver it to Vic Ruskin, the criminal who's been hiding out for ten years, but is now threatening to sue a movie company which dared to make a movie about him on the supposition that he was dead. But it's not so easy delivering the money, is it? The guide Ruskin sends to meet you is murdered before your arrival, and then a lawyer of sorts who is offering to sell his knowledge is shot from outside your own hotel window. Well, if your name is George Valentine, you give yourself a third and last chance as you sail down the coast with a girl you found in a bar and the boat captain she found, Captain Tog. Well, a little calmer this morning, huh? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you don't talk much, do you, Captain? Do I talk? There is nobody to talk to but people. Ha! <laughs> Anyway, it is a little calmer. I'm turning into the main river current. Yeah, yeah, so I see. Can't you remember any more about dropping Gatoni off, picking him up on your way back to Panama? Didn't he? Wake up down there, Pedro. High speed. Watch the bridge scraping in the mud, huh? Say, look, Captain Tog, the plantation pier. Don't you know who lives there? Haven't you ever heard the name Vic Ruskin? From you, yeah. 
I know the big hut plantation I do business for. The little forgotten dead ones. Numbers and places, that's all. For the alligators and snakes to lie waiting for man to lose his fight with the jungles. <laughs> Each one of us to his own craziness, eh? What do you mean? Here she comes. Oh. Now listen, Sarge. She found you, but I hired you. I'm paying the bill, you understand? Huh? Yeah. Perhaps not so crazy. I don't forget. Slaughter on the engine, you idiot! We're almost there, monsieur. Yeah. When we go ashore, when you give him the money, what will you say? I'm going alone. It, it may be hard to find if it. If there's a house, it won't be far from the pier. If Ruskin's in it, I'll be back on the boat fast. I knew him once. I could help to recognize him for you. Look, sister... I've got my own way. Hey, wait a minute. Cut it out. All right, cut it out, will you, Sammy? Say, uh, that ain't clean. Sure, sure. Who'd you think it'd be? Would you? Excuse. 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 Come with me. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, sure. It's real funny, isn't it? Your Indian getting my gun. Well, what do you expect, tourist? You don't think I'd let you come calling with a gun in your pocket? Come on, come on. Sign the papers, <laughs> Ruskin. I've got a date. Well, I've got to read the small print, ain't I? Boy, all them whereases. <laughs> I'm in the movies, Valentine. I hereby release all rights. <laughs> That's me. Yeah, well, it kills me, too. Let's see a sample signature. Oh, a legal beagle, huh? <laughs> and there. How do you like that? Oh, it's the same, all right. Check it against the letter I wrote, Grovich. Yeah. Okay, you're it. Now, come on, scribble it on the papers. Uh, there's a little matter of money. <laughs> there you are, big shot. Fifty grand. <laughs> look. Oh, baby, look. <laughs> you don't know what they mean down here. That's too bad Katoni can't be seeing this. He'd enjoy it. Look at him. <laughs> you could drop one on his grave. Just look at all the... What? I said on his grave. Whose grave? Oh, come on. Cut it out. Katoni's dead, and you know it. I laugh a lot, tourist. But I don't like jokes. I don't know any. The Irishman's dead, too. Bizarro Fane. But you know that. Valentine, what are you talking about? I live in the jungle. You said Katoni... Sure, you want me to think you've been a hermit ten years, so I'll send the police in this direction, maybe. But your face isn't yellow enough. What? A guy in the bush lives on Adiprene, doesn't he? For malaria. And this place of yours, Buster, it's broken down. You haven't got enough supplies. What did you do? Come down just before me so you could meet me here? Shut up. Maybe you were even at Panama when I was. Maybe you even killed those guys so you wouldn't have to run a split with them. I said shut up. Give me that money. I'm getting out of here. Give it to me, I said. Stop it! Well, you've got your uses in a shore party after all, haven't you, lady? Now, just let me hold that gun and... No. He was signing your paper, monsieur. Tasha. Hello, Tasha. Yes, yes, I was just... He will uh... sign your paper, monsieur. Sure, I'll sign it. There you are. And the money, monsieur. He's already got it. Then the business is over. Stand very still, monsieur, to one side. Oh, no, no, no! Give me that, you crazy little... What's the matter with you? Drop it, I said. All right, monsieur. Well, the business is over, all right. He's dead. I know it. Well, what in the name of blue blazes do you... He was my husband. You were what? Vic Ruskin was my husband. I told you this trip was important to me. I was as anxious to find him as you. Oh, sure, sure. So you kill him in front of a witness. Big love. You may do what you like. I've tried to find him for years. You were really married? In Venezuela, ten years ago. You ran away, took everything I had. My life isn't very pretty. And now you're a widow. 
and he was such a heel, a local court might let you off easy. And then you'd have 50,000 bucks inheritance. Maybe it is worth it. I don't want the money. You take it. There, in your pocket, monsieur. What? Well, okay, sister. Now go on back. I'll take care of things here. Shall I wait for you outside by the bamboo? Uh, no, no. Go on back to the boat. Tog won't leave without me. Of course not, but don't you think... Go I... on, I said beat it, will you? Yes, monsieur. Something a wild Irishman said keeps sticking in my mind. In a bamboo thicket by a path crossing. Sure, it's even the only crossing. I'll sell you what I know, my friend. An object, a statue. <laughs> Bizarro, I'll bet you're laughing at me. Hey... I wasn't kidding. This is it, all right. Homemade statue. Tombstone. Rest in peace. Victor Ruskin. Died 1939. Huh. Valentine, I guess you finally dug a grave for yourself, didn't you? Yeah, Captain. I'm all finished ashore. Yeah. Pedro, your lace has come. Uh, where's the girl now, Captain? Huh? Uh, she went to her cabin. We'll be casting off. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'll be watching from on deck. Pedro! Get that thing sailing so I can toss the lines. Hello. I was going to rest, monsieur, but... But you see, I'm here. Yeah, yeah, so am I. A person left up there in the jungle wouldn't have any way to get out, would he? <laughs> of course not. So the money's still safe, too, still here in my pocket. But of course. You know, uh, I guess I had a couple of chances to live and didn't take them. What? Back there in the house, I still had a chance to live. Only I had to get curious and goad that guy up there about Katoni and about his not really living here and about all I the have... things. I have killed a man, monsieur. I do not want to talk oh, about... Oh, yeah, you killed him, all right. Because I went too far and found out too much, and so did he. That's why Catoni died and Pizarro. They knew too much they might use for themselves. Sure you killed him. Even said you didn't care what happened. But it's like the money. You knew it had come back to you. You knew you were safe. Because now I'm on the death list, too. Monsieur, Because now no. I know too much, too. I know you were lying like a rug when you said he was Ruskin, when you said he was your husband. Get away from me. Oh, no, you don't. It goes like this, doesn't it? He was a phony put in there for the job. Oh, sure, he's the same guy I wrote to the movie company so the handwriting would check. And Katoni, he was going to be my guy. Let go of me. Let go of Only me. Only 50,000 bucks is a lot of dough down here, isn't it? I guess the hired hands got greedy. Was that why Katoni was knocked off? The lawyer, Pizarro, I suppose, gave advice on how to handle a movie company in the first place. But of course he had to get it when he came offering to spill me the whole works about Ruskin. I was on the telephone. I wasn't near your hotel room. I didn't do you it. Keep that mouth shut. I want to live. I saw the tombstone, sister. Vic Ruskin died, 1939. Only a guy named Lieutenant Riley convinced me that Ruskin's really alive. How's the right here, Pedro? Let's speak. He changes his identity. He builds a new identity he can live with and stay with even after engineering a fraud like this one. Mm. Oh, no. The pillow goes over the mouth. Don't mind if I tie the sheets a little tightly, do you? It's my life, remember? Sure, baby. A good identity. One that gets you around to all the places to arrange this business. To kill Katoni and the Irishman. All right, Tasha. The place for you is overboard. Don't worry, sister. You're not going overboard. A chair makes a better splash. Tasha! Baby, you that something's overboard. Stop the engine, you idiot. Don't, sir. Pleasant dreams, Captain Ruskin. What are you going to do? You can't run the boat. You're still miles from nowhere. I'll do all right, sister. I can use Ruskin's gun on Pedro. I can use the wireless. It would have been so simple. 
Vic would have shot you aboard, you would have come back a casualty of the greedy dead man in the jungle. Sure, and I suppose with a sob story, the widow would have collected the money legally. And Ruskin could have gone right on being kept in Tog forever. I underestimated you, monsieur. I'm sorry, monsieur. Can't you at least look at me for once? And uh, nobody has to know about the $50,000. And, and we can... The dance is over, Tasha. It's time to change partners. George, what was she like? You've told me everything else, but... What was Tasha really like? Oh, uh... Well, I, I don't know, Brooksy. <laughs> Ask Lieutenant Riley when he gets back from Panama with Ruskin. What was she like? Oh, now, look, Angel, keep your mind on the subject. It's not every night we get to see a private showing of a movie, is it? Right here in the home of a big no, producer? No, 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 I will kill myself. I am ruined. I will kill myself. Mr. Grovich, what's the matter? I thought you were on the phone. Long distance is a tragedy. My beautiful realism. Long distance? From Panama. From Lieutenant Riley. Now that Vic Ruskin is being extradited, he will stand trial for many crimes. But, Mr. Grovich... Half a million dollars he wants now. Half a million dollars for his rights so he can hire the best lawyers. This is what happens to me, the father of realism. The bank won't stand for it. My beautiful picture, every part of it so true to life, and now it would never breathe. Hey, wait a minute, Mr. Grovich. I've got an idea for a picture you could do. Um, look, a young man goes down to the jungle to deliver a crook some money. Only there he meets a very beautiful girl. But she's really the crook's wife. And she's... Uh, no, 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 no. It's not real. This could never happen. <laughs> There's your answer, Angel. If your car seems to have lost its pep, if it starts hard, acts logy in traffic, and drags on hills, maybe you can blame it on the season. For the gasoline in your car is sensitive to climatic changes. That's why Chevron Supreme gasoline is climate-tailored. Based on year-round weather reports, it's tailored to each season and to the West's different altitude and temperature zones. To get the best out of your car any time of the year and wherever you drive, go on Chevron Supreme. It's a premium quality gasoline, and with the first tank full, you'll notice how much better your car responds. Faster starts, smoother pickup in traffic, powerful ping-free performance on hills. In fact, you can't buy a better gasoline for today's high-compression engines. Ask for Chevron Supreme tomorrow. Get it at standard stations and at independent Chevron gas stations, where they say and mean, we take better care of your car. Tonight's adventure of George Valentine has been brought to you by Standard of California on behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and Standard stations throughout the West. Robert Bailey is starred as George. Let George Do It is written by David Victor and Jackson Gillis and directed by Don Clark. Virginia Gregg appeared as Brooksy, Wally Mayer as Lieutenant Riley. Ed Begley was Grovich, Ted DeCorsia, Fane, Maria Palmer, Tasha, Joseph Granby, Tog, and Fred Shields, Ruskin. The music is composed and presented by Eddie Dunstetter, your announcer, John Heaston. Listen again next week, same time, same station, to Let George Do It. This is the Mutual Don Lee Broadcasting System. <laughs>